Welcome back to Coding Money and to this video tutorial on Vertex AI Studio. We use Generative AI Studio with Vertex AI to create prompts and conversations on the Google Cloud Console without using any API or Python SDKs. I'll show you how to create prompts with freeform and structured mode, create conversations. Uh, we'll also know what the prompt gallery is and uh, explore the prompt gallery. Uh, we'll also talk about the prompt design, the zero shot, one shot, and few shot prompt engineering techniques. So without any further ado, let's get started. I'm going to use uh, Google Cloud uh, Vertex AI for this tutorial. Uh, I'm going to use the Quick Labs account. You can create a Google Cloud account if you don't have one. They provide free tire, uh, a generous free tire of $300 for new users to try out. And there's free um, there, there's free tire service. Even once you use your $300 limit, you can use like uh, compute engine, cloud storage, and these things uh, limited to usage for free. And you can use, you know, thousand units per month for vision AI and so many good things. Okay, so I've logged in um, to Google Cloud. And from here, I'm going to go to, I'm going to find Vertex AI and I'm going to click on Vertex AI Studio Overview. And here, I'm going to select uh, language powered by Gemini. I'm going to open it. And from this window, um, I can create prompts that lets you design prompts for tasks re relevant to your business use case, including code generation. Uh, I'm going to click on text prompt. Please note that the UI may change uh, slightly when you do this, but this is how it looks like at the time of recording. And so you have this interface for writing your prompts before you write code or create your application. This is good for prototyping, um, you know, and designing your prompts for your application or for your business use case. Um, if you hover or click on this question mark buttons on the right side of the page, you learn more about each field and parameter such as temperature, um, and a total limit. So let's uh, quickly go over. I'm going to use Gemini 1.5. This is the latest model at the time of recording this video. From this drop down, you can select a model to provide response to your prompt. So this is the model that will provide a response to our prompt. Uh, this temperature is the creative allowance for the model in generating the response at this output total limit is the desired length of the response and then there's like a safety setting that you can adjust from here like hate speech negative or harmful content uh, comments targeting identity and our protected attributes uh and dangerous, dangerous content sexually explicit content harassment contents you have advanced options from here like uh uh, top K, a uh, number of most probable tokens to consider as the next token. And this one is top P is a threshold probability for a token to be selected as the next token. And once you, if you hover on these question marks, you can, you can read more about them and to really understand what they are. Uh, here, um, we will write a prompt. A prompt is an input text that is used to guide the model's output. Let's talk about um, prompt design. Design. You can feed your desired input text, a question, uh, to the model here. Uh, the model will then provide a response on how you structure your prompt. Let's, let's give, for example, what is prompt gallery this is five tokens and if i submit it it provides a response it's going to provide a comprehensive response to the the prompt that i have provided here what's prompt gallery um the process of figuring out in designing a best input text um to get the desired response back from the model is, is called a prompt design um currently there is no best way to design the prompts yet uh, generally, there are three methods that you can use to shape the model's response in a way that you desire. There's uh, zero-shot prompting, 
this prompt is an example of a zero shot prompting. I just, this is a method where the large language model is given no additional data on the specific task that it's being asked to perform. Instead, it's only given a prompt that describes the task. Uh, for example, if you want a large language model to answer a question, you just prompt, uh, you just ask the question like, what is prompt design? You can ask for like, what is prompt design? And it will provide you a response here, okay? Um, there's um, one-shot prompting. This is a method where the large language model um, is given a single example of the task that is being asked to perform. For example, if you want the LLM to write a poem, you might give it a single example poem. Uh, there is a uh, few-shot prompting. Um, uh, this is a method where the large language model is given a small number of examples of the task that is being asked to perform. For example, if you want the large language model to write a news article in your own style, you might give it a few news articles, your own news articles that you have written for the model to read. Okay, so if you hit the three dots button over here, you're going to notice that there is a free form in the structure tabs if I close this, I mean, if I, let's see, if I can toggle the Vertex AI navigation menu, then I see the freeform and structure tabs uh, here. Uh, these are the two modes that you can use when designing your prompts. The freeform, uh, this mode provides a free and easy approach to design your prompt. It is suitable for small and experimental prompts with no additional examples. You'll be using this to explore zero-shot prompting. Um, structured, this mode provides an easy-to-use template approach to uh, prompt design. Context and multiple examples can be added to the prompt in this mode. This is especially useful for one-shot and few-shot prompting methods, which we'll be exploring later. I'll try zero shot prompting in the free mo free form mode, which I've already tried. Like I asked, prompt design. Let's uh, let's ask it what's uh, prompt gallery submit. The model will respond to the comprehensive definition of the term prompt gallery. Prompt gallery can refer to the different things. We can adjust this uh, token limit. I'll put token limit uh, to be like. If we want the model to provide short answers, we can adjust this. And we can also adjust the temperature like this. And if I click on submit now, you will notice that, well, it's still, let me, let me make it like really like 113 tokens and I submit. And as you can see, the model provided me with a short answer because I limited the number of output total limits and the uh, temperature I can adjust it to be like really zero and give me direct response like uh, okay uh, let's explore this structured uh, mode with the structure mode you can design prompts in more organized ways you can also provide context and examples and their responses and the input fields this is a good opportunity to learn one shot and few shot prompting from here I'll use the model to perform sentiment analysis on a sentence, such as determining whether a movie review is positive or negative. Um, so under the test field, I'm going to write a sentence. It was a time well spent, and I'm going to click Submit. As you can see, the model did not have enough information to know whether I was asking it to do sentiment analysis this can be improved by providing the model with a few examples of what I am looking for. Let's add some examples. An example, I'm going to say positive. I'm going to add another one. A well-made and entertaining film. Positive. I fell asleep after 10 minutes. Negative. The moving was okay. Okay. We have provided a few examples, which is a example of a few shot prompting and now we can try it um, again with the same sentence it was time well spent and if i select submit 
it'll know what to do with this prompt and I give positive. And if I say, if I say I didn't like the movie, this is a new prompt that I'm giving to the model. I've not uh, prompted with this sentence before, but it will know what to do with it. So if I click submit, it will know that this is a negative sentiment about the movie. We have successfully influenced the way the model produces the response. By clicking on here, and I can save this prompt for future reference, it's going to save it. This prompt will be saved in the prompt gallery under my prompts. So let me go back. Let me go back except without saving. Okay, let's start a conversation. Uh, the chat prompt lets you have a freeform chat with the model, which tracks what was previously said and responds based on the context. This is the uh, chat prompt page. For this section, we'll add a context to the chat and let the model respond based on the context provided. Um, here, I'm going to add context for the AI model. I'll say, your name is Roy. You're a support technician of an IT department. You only respond with, have you tried turning it off and on again to any queries? And then here, prompt uh, where it says, enter a prompt to begin a conversation, I'm going to say my computer is so slow. Click uh, enter uh, and send the message. And the model would consider the provider additional context and answer the question within the constraints that we have provided here. And it's, as you can see, it says, have you tried turning it off and on again? So that's the conversation prompts, chat prompt. I can save my prompts from here. It will be saved under the prompt gallery. Now let's explore the prompt gallery. Let's go back and here we have prompt examples and this is the prompt gallery. Prompt gallery lets you explore how generative AI models can work for a variety of use cases. To find the prompt gallery, you can, you can find the prompt gallery from Vertex AI Studio uh, under language. And if you scroll down, you'll see uh, prompt examples. Prompt gallery lets you explore how generative AI models can work for a variety of use cases. In the Vertex AI Studio, I click on language, and if you scroll down, you're going to see prompt examples. Um, as you can see, there are examples for summarization, there is uh, for classification, and there's for extraction, and um, prompt examples for writing, for creating ideas, question answering, code generation, code explanation, and chat example prompts. There are so many examples that you can try. Let's try one for support chat summary. As you can see, um, this is a freeform example and that's in another language, um, not in English. Analyze financial news, uh, I'm not gonna save it. Whoops, I'm not gonna save it, so I'm gonna continue. Uh, let's see classification per person sentiment. Here's the prompt, you can read it. And if I, I can run this example prompt, there's any. Congratulations, you learned how to create and test a prompt, create a conversation and explore a prompt gallery. I read all of the comments and I'd love to hear your thoughts. Please feel free to share your ideas for upcoming videos. If you don't have any question or suggestion, you can support my work just by typing coding money in the comments. This really helps with the YouTube algorithms. If you found this video useful, a thumbs up would be highly appreciated. Stay tuned for exciting new videos. To ensure you don't miss out, please subscribe and hit the notification bell icon. Until next time, thank you for watching.